going to uh, celebrate something that was, was so spectacular. This Aggie Bowl victory. This Aggie season, the path to the Aggie Bowl, Bowl victory. The way it all played out and, and how special it was. And really, to celebrate that, what's been the year of the Aggie. Did you enjoy the uh, football sweep over the Lobos and the Miners this year? Did you enjoy the basketball sweep over the Lobos this year? How about the basketball sweep over the Miners too? Like, like the, I was told that's only happened three times ever, and, and a couple of those times were back in the 30s. So the year, the, and I, I don't know if you know this, but the voice of the Aggies, Jack Nixon, just last week, was named by the National Sports Media Association as the New Mexico Sportscaster of the Year. Keep yeah. wobbling. We're going to celebrate football. We're here to do that. And we're, we're, I mean, keep celebrating. But we would be remiss if we didn't take a look. I don't, I don't know how many of you have gotten to see what is a really, really good basketball team. And Chris Jans put together a team that not only has swept the Lobos and swept the Miners, they went out and beat, at the time, the seventh ranked team in the country, Miami. The si oh, sorry, the sixth ranked team in my, my mask, real bad. The sixth ranked team in the country, Miami. They're 17 and three, so we would be remiss if we didn't take a look at what the Aggie basketball team looks like. Take a look. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Terry Cosper Insurance Agency is a proud partner with ProView Networks and a proud supporter of New Mexico High School Athletics. Terry has been a local farmer's agent for over 20 years for auto, home, life, and business insurance. Just like high school sports are important, so are teen drivers. For more information, call Terry or one of his licensed staff members at 898-5556. Quotes are available for you. DreamStyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as Best Custom Home Remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, DreamStyle Remodeling is family owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 Thousand homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. DreamStyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000 square foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or DreamStyleRemodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. Hey guys, my name is Mario Mocha. I'm the director of athletics at New Mexico State University. 
Class of 89, I believe I have the paperwork to prove that. I'm not 100% sure. Those records were destroyed in a fire, so let's just say I'm a graduate. I'd be remiss. Jeff Simbieta does an excellent job. Uh, he really promotes us. We know that he's here in Lobo Country, but he talks about us a lot. He gets a lot of our guys on the radio. And we're going to definitely pander because we definitely need to be in that New Mexico Bowl coming up, Gildan, New Mexico Bowl. But Jeff, thank you for doing that. Please wear your Aggie shirt. Okay, and don't, don't take too much crap about that when you put it on. All right. Hey, I'm going to start this program. Um, but you know what? I just got handed a pretty impressive note. If you guys could just maybe scoochies a little bit here, I want to recognize this gentleman, Thomas Begay. Thomas is one of 11 living code talkers. His daughter-in-law is a graduate of New Mexico State University. Sir, not to meet you. Thank you for being here. How about a big round of applause? That's pretty amazing. Thank you. Thank you for your service. We should have ended on that because that's going to be the highlight of the night. I don't even know if Coach Martin could, can top that. Oh, my goodness. We've got some really good Aggies around there. Okay, uh, I'm just going to talk about a couple things. This is a football function, but gee whiz. As Jeff said, when you're 17 and 3, uh, you've got to talk about the program a little bit. Chris Jans is doing a tremendous job in his first year, obviously beating the Lobos and beating the UTEP. You know, we've only done that eight times in our history in basketball, three of them before World War II. We've only had the Grand Slam sweep, four wins in basketball and two in football, four times in our school's history, 1937-38, 1960, 61, 2002, 3, and 2017, 18. So it's been a darn good year. You saw the video, obviously, going to the United Center and beating Illinois in front of all their fans was huge. And then you saw the Diamond Head Classic when you're playing on ESPN in Christmas time. It's pretty amazing uh, when you're one of few games on TV. You know, Davidson right now is 5-1 in the Atlantic 10. Uh, obviously, uh, now I have it. They're just giving you a hard time. Miami was like six in one poll, seven in another. But six. let's just say they were six. six. Uh, but we beat them. They're like 14 and four right now. And then we lose to USC, who's having another tremendous year, right? In the last 30 seconds, that dang guy threw in a dang three pointer from the Pacific Ocean to beat us. But uh, tremendous. You know, right now we're, I don't know, I hope Jeff Grammer's not here. I'm sure he'll tweet it out that I made a mistake. But 35. Third, ranked 35th in the country in the AP poll, 39th in the coaches poll, and the college insider mid-major poll's got us number three. Okay, that's behind St. Mary's, Gonzaga, and New Mexico State. So suffice it to say, basketball is doing a tremendous job. You know, we had a 37-day gap away from the Pan Am Center. We were three and one. And um, I'll tell you, you know, a lot of people talk about attendance. Uh, we had over 6,000 people last time, you know, in a town of 100,000. That's not bad, but of course we want to sell the place out. But the reality is we, we're doing a big thing. Part of trying to keep your coach is making sure that they walk out there and there's a lot of people. We've got a, a game coming up against Grand Canyon, you know, one of our rivals, Saturday, February the 10th, okay? We're making that a pack the Pan Am game, so all the tickets in the upper level are five bucks. So people here, I know that, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to come down to cruises, but people who say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna send some kids to that game. We've got an excellent relationship with the Las Cruces Public Schools, as well as our service clubs. So Chet can kind of hold up with that, uh, uh, what our flyer looks like. If anybody's interested in sending some kiddos, uh, we'd love to have you do that. So thank you very much. Okay, that is basketball, and we showed the video. But, you know, we are in Albuquerque, and I feel for you. I lived here, all right, as an Aggie. I went through that period of my life where I was confused. I worked for the Lobos for four and a half years. But I asked DJ, I called DJ and I said, hey, you gotta put together a highlight of our uh, games against UNM. So I think DJ is, uh, DJ, are you gonna, let's see, let's see, roll this DJ.
So where do you go? Where do you get Aggie news? I want to introduce the gentleman with whom I host a award-winning radio show every morning, who uh, knows so much about the Aggies, who is passionate about what they do. Our show is on from, uh, from what are we on? 7 to 10 a.m. every morning on 94.5, 95.9 FM and AM 610 Sports Animal. This is J.J. Buck, with whom I do the show every morning. I know you know this Hall of Famer. He is, was inducted two years ago into the New Mexico Hall of Fame. He does an afternoon show on ESPN Radio 1017, the team in Albuquerque from 11 to 1 o'clock. Is that right, Henry, on Saturday afternoons? Yeah, he is Henry T. Yeah. In the Albuquerque Journal, a guy I've seen for years in the press box down in, in Las Cruces, who does a great job covering the Aggies for the Albuquerque Journal, who's out here tonight, Ken Sickinger back here from the Albuquerque Journal. Is there anybody else in the media that I may have missed? I, I, I saw you. Oh, what's up, you guys? All right. What time's your show on? Nine, nine in the morning, Saturday morning. Number one on Saturday morning. Number one on Saturday mornings on ESPN Radio 1017, the team. All right. There you go. Here, here's the deal. In my, my background, and here's why I'm, I, 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 I've got such a great affection for the Aggies and the Aggie fans. I've been treated so well down there. I've had such a great time, and I've made some incredible friends down there. But I've been fortunate enough to do Aggie Vision games uh, for a number of years and watch this program grow and watch what Doug has done with the program. Doug comes on our show every Tuesday. Whether, whether it's a win, whether it's a loss, Doug Martin is there, never shied away from a question. You guys don't just have a good football coach, but I think you know this, you have a heck of a man running your football program. And the person is what Doug has done, I remember, remember the conversation we had after a tough loss and, and whoever I am, but I just keep doing what you're doing because it's gonna pay off. And I know you're not there yet, I know that you said this is the beginning, but this is the beginning, and congratulations, Doug, because what you've done and the way you've done it speaks volumes, and this entire state, not just the Aggies in this room, but this entire state sees what's going on. Congratulations to, to what you, for you. So now what? Here's the, here's the difference between a good team and a good program, right? You don't want it just to be a good team. You want this to be a good program. That means year after year after year after year, you all got to feel what you felt in Tucson. That means resources. That means support. That means, I don't want to listen about 1960 anymore. And it's not going to be just about 2017. Charlie Johnson told me a story the first time we had lunch, first Aggie game I ever did on television. Charlie Johnson, you all know Charlie? Charlie and I were sitting at Lorenzo's, across the street from the Pan Am Center. And one of the first things he said to me is, Jeff, before I die, before I go, I want to lose the title of being the last quarterback to take the Aggies to a bowl game. Seriously, that's what he said. And he's so passionate about it. But it was Remember 1960. That was too damn long, you guys. Like, as good as this felt, as good as it was, now you want to make it a, a habit. Now it needs to be what you do every year. So how do you do it? Amen. Doug's doing his part. Amen. Now it's going to be up to the alumni. Now it's going to be up to the support staff. Now it's going to be up to Aggie Nation. They say you won't come, but when it mattered, boy, did you show up. And that's why I'm going to introduce to you this next speaker. She's the vice president in charge of Alumni Association. Listen to what she's got to say, because this is important. Getting the alumni involved is the next step in taking this to where you want it to be every year. Please give a welcome to Leslie Cervantes. Thank you. Hey, I always start every alumni reception with, it's a great day to be an Aggie and alum in New Mexico State University. 
It's especially awesome when we're together to celebrate nights like tonight. Coach Martin, his team, our student athletes. I'm here representing the Alumni Association and the New Mexico State University Foundation. I want to just give a quick shout out to four alums that are feeding you this evening. We're happy to have them. Smokey and Allie Torgeson, Walt and Betty Hines, Lorenzo and Yolanda Moreno, and Charlie and Carol Rogers. So we, we thank you all for what you do to, to support our programs. You know, alumni matter to us in so many ways. You support by showing up, buying tickets, and then we ask you sometimes to help us with some programs, right? Like athletics, scholarships, and you all rise to the occasion for that too. And so on behalf of all of us at New Mexico State, thank you for your collective giving because it really makes a difference for our students and our student athletes. Last Saturday, we did a quick crowdfunding uh, program. Once we were announced we were going to the bowl, we did a quick, quick turnaround crowdfunding campaign online, and we presented Coach with a $42,000 check last Saturday. Yes. And that helps Coach be able to retain that staff he has, that awesome team he has, recruiting dollars to help recruit students, and then pro, uh, weights and, and other supplies, capital supplies he needs for his program. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do to support New Mexico State. I kind of want to introduce to you our chapter leader in the what we call our Crimson Central chapter. It's our biggest alumni chapter, and you all are members of that. So please allow me to introduce you to Adam Thompson. Hi, Agnes. So I'm going to ask you to do two things for me tonight. You're all here now. I need you to come out more. We have events all year long. And the biggest problem we have in Albuquerque, we don't have people show. This is a great, great attendance. I need you to come out to their next event. The other thing I need to do, and this is probably just as important, if not more important, I can guarantee every single person in this room knows at least one alumni that's not involved, that has never come back to the campus, never come to an event. I need you to get them to show up. Be it here in Albuquerque, be it down in Las Cruces, be it anywhere, get them involved. Because that will help Leslie, that will help Doug, that will help athletics. So let's get out there and bring the alumni back. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Well, I was like, we, we talked about this for years, it can be like this, right? When people feel good, you, you, it's what you've wanted for so long. Keep this going, adhere to what they say. Be a part of it, be active. If you can't be there, maybe buy some tickets and help some other people go to the game. Get this community involved, because what Doug has done is recruit a heck of a football team. And now going to this independent schedule, Mario and Doug have put together something that's really exciting. You've got an opportunity to continue this, to make this not an anomaly. Keep it going and, and, and listen to what he's saying. You can get a little uh, taste of Aggie history. Aggie, it says Aggie Bull history, and I looked at Mario said this about Aggie Bull history. Like, like, what, it's like French war heroes. How long can this be? What are we doing? But you just added a heck of a chapter. And Walt Hines is here to tell you about Aggie Bowl history and the latest chapter that you just added. Walt? Walter. Well, I'll tell you, I've been around as an Aggie fan uh, for a long time. I, my first Aggie game was 1949. Uh, my dad was athletic director at New Mexico A&M. Before that, he was the coach of the first Aggie Sun Bowl team in 1936. So I have a little connection there. But the most fun was uh, the 59 and 60 Sun Bowl teams. Uh, there were several of us from Highland High School. My dad was pretty easy on us. And we went down to El Paso for both of those games. We got in a lot of trouble in Juarez. <laughs> uh, but boy, it was fun and the Aggie fans were very excited. But uh, to tell you uh, how excited they were then doesn't compare to what went on in Arizona. And I, I've seen them all and I know just how wonderful an experience that was and how it, uh, how it got the alumni and the fans just really going. 
and I'd just like to congratulate uh, Coach Martin. And I want to say something. Coach Martin's wife has just been unbelievable support for him. Yeah. And she deserves a good And I know uh, Connor Kramer is here today. And uh, don't forget that he's the one that caught the pass in the end zone at, at the end of the South Alabama game that got us into a bowl. So again, congratulations, Coach. And I know we're going to do great things again next year. Thank you. Thank you. Keep adding to history. Keep adding to the books. Keep adding, keep adding. It's how you make tradition. That's how people come back year after year after year and keep adding. And you do it with great leadership. You've got a heck of an athletic director here, guys. And, and, and what Mario has done in, in three years, it's three years and 20 days today since Mario's been uh, the athletic director. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. That is exactly right. I do a little research every now and then. JJ does more than me. I don't know if you knew it was three years and 20 days. He's negotiated a multi-million dollar deal with Learfield. He's got a multi-year apparel deal done with Under Armour that is, that is tremendous. That's beyond what has been able to be done here before. I wrote these notes right there earlier when it was in my office and there was light. And now I'm up here and I realize how bad my eyes are. But, but I know that there's been a lot of facility improvements. What's that bottom thing I wrote? Where, where the, oh, the APR issue, which was tackled. You tackle the APR issue, which was... We, we, so hey, you guys hear about APR. I don't... What, what, oh, whatever that means. What that meant for Doug when he got here is that he didn't have a full allotment of scholarships and couldn't practice one day a week. Like, think of that. You're a football team. You got the mandatory day off, and then you, you can't take it... You have to take another day off. Oh, and we don't have as many players as the other guys? Oh, but we're supposed to be. Got that figured out. That's no longer a problem because these guys got it taken care of. He went out, needed to hire a basketball coach this year. He found a guy named Chris Jans who's done a pretty good job. You know what else he did? He stayed with this guy. When a lot of you in this room might have wanted to make a change, you don't have to admit it. You don't have to admit it. It was the other people. And it was all those other people, people who don't show up. Because I know there's none of you in this room who are putting pressure on him. He stayed with a guy that, that he knew was going to get you to this place. I'm going to introduce to you the director of athletics at New Mexico State University, Mario Mosher. Thank you. Hey, I know Doug is the man of the hour, but you know I never turned down the mic to tell you about statistics and all that other stuff. Okay, I, first of all, I want to thank the Devo Lodge. You know, Jim Long, an alum, Adrian Perez have been great partners. They've got a lot of different properties, a lot of levels. I love this place because it's so centrally located. So I want to thank them and their leadership. Uh, you know, we rattled off an awful lot of our media folks here, but you know, the good folks at KNMM, I was on there today. Matt Martinez, that's 11.50 uh, a.m. and 102.1 uh, FM. You know, they're carrying our games up here. He's in the back, Matt, can you rave your arm over there? So Matt, so whatever you do, send every alum that owns a business my way so they can sponsor our broadcast. But we really appreciate being on. We know it's a new station that's growing and we appreciate that, you know, you're taking a chance on the Aggies up here. So thank you very much for having us. So that's KNMM. Uh, also want to thank, uh, Le you know, Leslie beat me to the punch, thanking our alums who provided the food. Thank you as well, Lorenzo and Smokey and, and Alan and, uh, and Walt and Betty. Uh, but also Larry Lynch, you know, I think he provided these huge, wonderful, oversized uh, newspaper things. I believe he did that. Uh, nobody take the, I don't think he's here, uh, but tell him thanks and uh, nobody steal those because we're going to take those back to my office. Uh, Mario, ABQ the magazine. Yeah, ABQ the magazine, Lara Lynch, yeah, yeah, did a tremendous job with that. Uh, Brian Cox came all the way from uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, so visit the store, he's got all the bold merchandise. We kind of dedicated a room back there, but thanks to sports accessories, you got to have the bold merchandise. and then. Bosque Brewing, where is my main man, Kevin Jameson? Where's Kevin, an alum? Bosque Brewing. Kevin, come up here right quick. Yeah, I'll just get the whole thing. Can he get up here? He's trapped back there. My God. Gabe's here too. Oh, Gabe's here too? Where's Gabe? Where's Gabe? Okay, this is the, uh, this is the, in half of the, well, one third of the team. I don't know where Gabe is. He's probably. There he is. Gabe, come on. There's Gabe. I know you micro brew guys don't like to be in the spotlight, for God's sakes. All right, so this is uh, Bosque Brewing, the leadership, Aggies, and the, uh, the 
creators and inventors of Pistol Pete's 1888 Ale. So guys, thank you very much. Thank you for providing some uh, free product as well. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your support. Appreciate it. Thanks. Ryan Cox, I would have brought him up here, but he's selling t-shirts at a feverish pace back there. Uh, okay, so talk a little bit about football. As I said, you know, in our sports history, this is all courtesy of Walt, we've, we've swept the uh, uh, Lobos and the Miners 12 times in the sport of football. Six of those was before World War II. Okay, so that's a, it's a great achievement for us to do that. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the season. In the middle of the season, we had a very auspicious trip to Appalachian State, where after we had to stop and get gas, which most teams do not have to do because they fly other airplanes, we were told upon departure from Wichita Falls that we had to return immediately because of a total navigation system failure, which I assume means, hey, we can't fly the plane very well. So we landed, that turned into an eight hour ordeal. And by the time we landed at Hickory and drove to our hotel, we put our head on the pillow at 4 a.m., wake up at 9 a.m., and we had those guys, but that was just an interesting tidbit. I think it kind of made us tougher as the year went on, but uh, that, was a, uh, that was definitely a highlight. Eight, eight hours in the Wichita Falls Airport. You know, the South Alabama game was uh, unbelievable. Um, obviously, you're gonna hear from Connor Kramer who made the catch. 32 seconds left, I mean, I didn't have any fingernails left, but we had 20,000 fans in the stands. Okay, there was a lot of November and December games, if you guys can hear me in the back, November and December games where we had 20,000 fans, or we had no fans. I mean, I always said you could have shotgun practice and not hurt anybody. But that is what helped us get over the hump. That was a tremendous and a phenomenal experience to see the fans rush the field and the total outpouring of support um, from our fan base. And then you go to the Nova Home Loans Arizona Bowl. Um, you know, I thought we were gonna have 12,000 people there because I knew that we moved 8,000 tickets from our box office. I kind of thought two to four at the most bought directly from the Arizona Bowl. But uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, hey, what was your best moment in the whole thing? For me, it was looking up right before kickoff and seeing 25,000 Aggies yeah. of, different, uh, of different ages, different races different everything, coming together and cheering for the football team in a bowl game. I mean, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I mean, we had this wonderful uh, plaza celebration on Saturday. I get emotional watching the damn end of the game. When Larry Rose, I mean, I'm on the treadmill running in the morning and I'm starting to cry. I'm like, what's wrong with me, all right? But um, it was emotional for people. It was a tremendous experience. That was the best moment. Um, yeah, you talk about the game highlights. I, I called out the kids, but Jason Huntley, you know, we get a gut punch with a 97 yard return. And you're like, oh my God. And then Jason Huntley punches right back with a 100 yard return. He's a tremendous player for us. Uh, Terrell Hanks, our linebacker, number two from Miami, Florida. At the goal line, they score, we're in serious trouble. How often do you see it? He bats the ball down and recovers it himself. I mean, unbelievable. And then a lot of people don't remember, but uh, Jonathan Boone, Jonathan Boone on a fourth down play, a diving catch on the sideline, which then allows Jaleel Scott to do what he does, drag that toe in the end zone after that tremendous uh, gut wrenching, waiting for the officials to tell us it was a touchdown. And then obviously nothing more fitting then Larry Rose the third, our third team All-American, to score that touchdown. You know, I, I want to tell you guys a quick story. Uh, and um, it was at the press conference with Dalton Harrington, our linebacker, with uh, Larry Rose the third and Doug. And they asked him, hey, what's your best moment at the bowl? It wasn't the gifts, it wasn't the food, it wasn't the adulation. You know what he said? He said, go into the children's hospital because we got to put a smile on all those kids' faces, and um, it kind of put our lives in perspective. And I'm like, can we clone that kid? Okay, that is the epitome of what you want in a student athlete, Larry Rose III, and we know he and Tyler and Jaleel are working out uh, for the NFL draft right now. Um, storybook ending the last two games, right? For a program that hasn't had many storybook endings, 
we uh, we got them in the last two games. And you know, while I'm unbelievably happy for the players, the assistant coaches, uh, you know, all the former players. So many former players have reached out because now it's not that they weren't proud before, but they're like, hey, they're talking about our program right now. You know, I think that was that was phenomenal. Um, the national news media was nothing short of tremendous. Um, I, I was amazed by it. I know that a lot of other people uh, from around the country reached out to me and it was wonderful. But um, the most important two games, arguably, in the last 57 years, what has been the knock on Aggie football? Low attended, right? Not much attendance. But we had tremendous attendance the last two games and we won. So that's a big takeaway. You know, we obviously, we need folks in the stands. I uh, want to talk a little bit about the future, 2018. Okay, we're going independent. We've got a great schedule at home. We've got Wyoming, UNM, Liberty, Georgia Southern, and we're going to finally play an FCS like everybody else uh, in Alcorn State. So we've got five games at home. But the future games, and tell me if you see this as a little bit of a, a repeating theme, Hawaii, San Jose State, San Diego State, Utah State, UMass. Um, Texas State, Louisiana Lafayette, and we're gonna we're gonna challenge ourselves. We got Alabama on the schedule. That freshman quarterback will just be a junior in 2019, and uh, we've got Ole Miss, and uh, we're talking about Florida too. So we've got a wide gamut, but we've got an awful lot of Mountain West opponents on there because, quite frankly, that's what we aspire to do is get in that Mountain West conference. So we're glad we're, we've got those. So a lot of people say, "Are you okay with going independent?" We had a stretch this year where we had one home game in two months. From September 25th to November 25th, we had one home game. Now we've got a game in August, September, two in October, one in early November. So that is, uh, that's gonna help us out a lot. There was only two teams in the country that just played five home games and did not play an FCS opponent, which because of our budget situation, we can. That was us at the Naval Academy that went to bowl games. Take that stat, that's pretty impressive. So what Doug did is, is just amazing. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, ways of support. We're gonna hit you up tonight, get you to take some material, and Chet's got it right there. Um, season tickets, okay? We've gotta have an improvement in season tickets. A lot of people say, hey, I'm in Albuquerque, I can't come down as much. Season tickets are as low as 60 bucks. You want to buy one for a kid, we will definitely make sure we get it used. But that is going to be a huge emphasis on our program, is selling season tickets. And then the Aggie Athletic Club. When I walked in the door, the Aggie Athletic Club was doing $168,000. Our friends right here at the Lobo Club is doing 2.6. Today, that number is at $577,000. It's going to get to a million. That's a 240% increase. But uh, we hope everybody will take a look at that. And we're not talking about huge bucks. You only got 10 bucks, we'll take $10. I mean, we've never turned out a dime. So if everybody on board does a little something, we'll get to where we want to go. So um, with that said, I want to introduce the video before um, we talk to our student athlete, Doug Martin. But uh, this is something that's been tremendous. Once again, DJ put this together. We show this to our recruits and um, Go ahead, DJ, run it. Here at the all-new Gala Chevrolet, our ultimate goal is to make life easier for you. That's why we built our new ultra-modern facility from the ground up with the customer in mind. Front to back, top to bottom. This is your dealership, New Mexico. The all-new Gala Chevrolet. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Get into the game with Garden Swords Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 Shut Helmet. It's all at Garden Swords Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swords Team Sales. 
Hey everyone, Adam Deal here with ProView Networks. Extreme Clean is a proud sponsor and supporter of ProView Networks and all high school sports athletics. Owner Mike McLean and Extreme Clean specialize in carpet cleaning for apartment, realty, business, and residential clients. With over 20 years experience, attention to detail and quality customer service matters. For more information, give them a call at 505-221-6440. Extreme Clean. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provia Sports Network. So cool. Yeah. You know, I got chills, didn't you? Yeah. It's all right. I want you to think back to the moments when Connor caught the touchdown against South Alabama when Larry crossed the goal line. What'd you do? That's all right. What'd you do? Like, if, the, if there was a camera on you, would you be all right with looking at it? Here's why it matters so much. Here's why sports is so cool. Because nothing brings groups of people together like that. Nothing makes people feel so good when they come together, I was watching the South Alabama game with my 11 year old daughter. And obviously she's growing up with me, she's growing up in a sports home. But we're watching grown men, grown women, friends of mine, some of you in this room. You wear suits every day. And you're jumping up and down like school children. And it's awesome. That's why this was so good. That's what this team did for you all. That's what sports does. It brings you together, it makes you feel good, and it makes you jump around like an 11 year old child all over again, and it was awesome, and it's because of what Doug and this team did. I want to bring up the guy who caught that yes. game winning catch, the, 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 the play that put New Mexico State into a bowl game for the first time in 57 years, Connor Kramer. Where are you, Connor? <laughs> Connor, great to see you. Are you, are, you, are you still flying? Like, every night when you put your head on the pillow, do you still think about it? No doubt. That's just a memory that I'll never lose from years on out. Uh, telling my grandkids, I'll be telling them this story. And it was just a story beginning. Couldn't end it any better on senior day. And it was also my birthday as well. So it was just oh. a Happy birthday. At what point, like, you knew what the play meant. You knew what the game meant. You knew what the moment meant. When did it, maybe it was the second you ran the route, maybe it was the second you caught the ball, when did you realize the magnitude of what you just did? Yeah, at, right after I caught the ball and got up and just saw the fans, uh, everyone was going crazy, and I couldn't call myself either, I just took off running. Uh, didn't know what to do really. Um, but yeah, it hit me right there, it was just so surreal, all the feelings and emotions that were going on, it was just a great feeling. Here's a guy who went through the gamut of emotions, came here, he was a quarterback, he's from, from Mobile, Alabama, where South Alabama happens to be. Went to Nimi, came here as a quarterback, and ends up catching maybe the biggest reception in the history of the program. Let, let people understand the, the ride, right? From, from coming here, from the struggles, to, to the losses, to, to the high that was the season. Yeah, definitely, definitely a long, tough ride. A uh, bunch of highs and a bunch of lows. Um, I ended up at four different colleges. This is my fourth one. Uh, so I was all over from California to New Mexico and up school in Alabama. And just to, to end up here and then get moved to receiver ended up being uh, the best thing that could have happened. And uh, just ending the season the way we did uh, with a bold victory to break the 57-year drought, it was storybook ending. I know you know now, right? You've met so many alumni probably since that day and, and in Arizona. And you guys in the locker room, probably you hear about it, it's 57 years, it's a bowl drought, it means a lot. Did you have any idea what it meant to so many people? No doubt, no doubt. I grew up watching football, loving football, watching bowl games, and I just know 
57 years is a long time to, to, get, to, to get a ball victory, and, and, and I'm just honored to be on, on, on this team that, that got it done, and to see all these faces of these alumni and Aggie fans all over the state, it's just, just a great, amazing feeling for me. Coach Martin obviously was selling something, and, and, and I remember when I started a bull game and I'm selling a promise. Coach Martin was starting a program essentially and selling a promise. What was it that you bought into and said, yeah, I want to be a part of that? Yeah, for sure. Ever since I got here, that was the vision. Um, make a bowl game and win the bowl game. And, and we put in the work, me and my teammates, um, Coach instilled that vision in us. And uh, all through the off season, we just worked and worked and talked about it. We just want to get to this that point. And uh, this season, we had our ups and downs. It uh, didn't look promising at times, um, but the fans stuck with us. Uh, we appreciate y'all's support, everything that y'all did for us. And we ended up pulling it through at the end. And it just no better way to end it than the way we did it. You know, the guys come from everywhere. Oh, well, that's all right, please. You know, I, I always wonder when you get a locker room of guys from Alabama and California and Texas and Hawaii and just wherever, what, what, what does it mean when you play the Lobos, when you play the Miners, when, when you hear about it's supposed to be a rivalry? At what point, maybe it's when you come to functions like this and realize what those games mean to, to, to the alumni, but at what point do you realize what being an Aggie means and what those big rivalry games mean? Yeah, well, when we're getting recruited, that's the first things we hear about the robberies. Uh, everybody knows about all that. And um, just being in the locker room with the guys, that's what we talk about. Uh, you know, it's a rival game. Uh, we want to win those. We want to be the, the top of the state. And um, so just being in, in the four-year guys that were there before me, they let you know how it's going to be. So when you're preparing for that week, you know to turn it up a notch and uh, get ready for those rivalry games. People back in Mobile, I mean, that was against South Alabama. You caught that. You had had people on the other side. Yeah, well, I had my, my, my parents were out uh, at the game, uh, so that was nice to celebrate with them. But, yeah, I had my family back home and all my coaches and, and everybody I knew growing up, uh, the radio stations, they were all talking about uh, the game. So it was just great to, to hear from all those people back home. Right, what was the play call? In, in the huddle, Tyler calls. What, what's the play? So everybody know this is the play that puts you in a bowl game. What was it? Uh, I believe it was quick to will. Yeah, quick two wheel. I had the wheel came in motion and ran the wheel route. That's the whole call. Quick two wheel. That's it. That simple. And uh, yeah, I just had man-to-man -man coverage and, and, and made a play on the guy. And Tyler made a great throw where only I could catch it. Was that on one, on two, or what was it? Yeah, just just regular one snap count. <laughs> quick two wheel is the play that'll go down in Aggie history. Connor, congratulations on a great career and a real guy that these people will know. That's the young men that represent New Mexico State. Great student athletes, great young men. How many specimens have we been at 3.0? And terrific Travis? football players. How many, how many uh, have we been at 3.0? How many, Mario? Uh, 25, 25 consecutive five. semesters uh, with all the student athletes being over. So the athletic department, 25 straight semesters over 3.0. the term student athlete and I know so many people scoff at that but you know one percent less than one percent are going to play pro ball the rest of these are real student athletes and, and that's not to say that one percent's not but I think you get a skewed picture these are real student athletes who are taking advantage of an un unbelievable opportunity and that young man right there encapsulates that and, and, and it's pretty special I'm going to introduce your head coach um, I'm so impressed with Doug Martin, and, and I've got to talk to Doug. JJ and I get to, get to speak with Doug every Tuesday. And when I was doing Aggie Vision games, I get to go down and talk to him, and I'm proud to call Doug a friend. I am impressed by, by so many things, by the way he's done it, by the way he's acted, if that makes any sense. So it, it, it's, man, when you're taking shrapnel like that, it, it's not easy to go out and get beat. <laughs> And you know, I mean, you've seen the records, and I'm not, I don't want to open wounds, but it, it, it was a process. And Doug saw, I'm going to stick to this. We're, going to, we're not going to just go the quick route and just get JUCOs. We're not going to get two-year guys in here that are going to bring down our GPA and, and be here for two years and not the right kind of guys. It's a process. It was patience. Patience isn't easy. There's not a, a fan base in America, not one, that's got patience. I don't know, do you, anybody know one that's got patience? That's right, they don't. And after 57 years, y'all didn't either, and I don't blame you. <laughs> but this man had a plan, and he stuck to it. 
and with all the fire that he was under and all the stuff that was being said, this is a good, strong, solid man, and he's a heck of a football coach, and now he is a bowl champion as a head coach. He's your head coach, Doug Barton. Tell you one thing, it was a lot more fun coming up here today to talk to you guys than it has been in the past. I'll promise you that. <laughs> uh, you know, a couple of things, there's a lot of people to thank here, but um, you know, Walter's right. They, all coaches' wives go straight to heaven. I'm gonna promise you. And Vicky's uh, been through all this. And uh, you know, when I, you know, when I first came up here, I brought her out and I told you guys, I said, You see, this is proof I can recruit. <laughs> There's no way that should be with me. You know what I'm but, uh, and now we all know I can recruit after this team. So we've got that done, but she's been fantastic. The other person is Mario Mocha. I'll tell you guys, and, and when you don't know the in and outs of the profession, you, Jeff knows the in and outs of the profession, you know, normally when a new athletic director comes in, they want to hire their own guy and they want to do their own thing, and you know, they don't even listen to you. And, and Mario could have done that easily uh, with where we were in the process of building a program for really from scratch is what we were trying to do. But he came in and he listened, and you know he and I talked, and I think we've talked every day since that day, just about, and that's rare with an athletic director. Uh, so if you guys, if I could tell you guys one thing, you better hang on to that guy. That's your number one thing. You better hang on. So if I could just talk to you a little bit about you know, the fans and what you guys have meant. Obviously, this group up here, you guys have been so loyal and to the football program and to me uh, personally. And I've got so many close friends up here and can't wait to celebrate this thing with you guys tonight. But uh, what you guys mean to, to Vicki and I up here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. journey but it's been a great journey but I will tell you the fans you know Connor uh, talked talk about it a little bit you know when I came here I had a vision of what this would look like one day and an old friend of mine Joe Novak he was the head coach at Northern Illinois and Mario knows him very well and he rebuilt the program at Northern Illinois he was three and 33 in his first three seasons and I asked Joe I said how do you do this every day man because I'm about to put a shotgun in my mouth or something I've had you know and he said, listen, Macy, get a vision in your head of what it's going to look like one day and just keep that vision every day in your head. And one day you're going to walk out there and, man, it's just going to be there. And South Alabama was that vision. You know, after the game, I left the field and I walked up that ramp and I just stood there and watched everybody celebrating and uh, the win and the way the players were and the fans. That was the vision. That was the vision right there. So I know it can be done here. We all know it can be done here because it, it just happened. But I, I told the crowd last week at the celebration in Las Cruces, you know, this team, as great as they were, and they were one of the most fun teams I've ever been around coaching, they really won five games this year. Our fans won the last two, you know, to get those out of I'll promise you. Uh, that South Alabama crowd was unbelievable, and Connor could tell you that too. And I have never been around a bowl game. I've been to seven bowl games in my career. I've never been to one like that, where a fan base comes in and, takes over the city, then takes over the stadium, then takes over the field after the game. And uh, what you guys did was amazing. And you know, at halftime, my, my son Corey is our wide receiver coach and recruiting coordinator. We came out in the second half and I told him, I said, you gotta turn around and look up in these crowds and look at these Aggie fans because you may never be a part of something like this again in your coaching career. And we just kind of stared at that. And in the fourth quarter, we were down touchdown had to, had to tie it up and had to one more touchdown to tie it up and back behind us the crowd started chanting I believe that we can win I believe that we can win I can't tell you what that did for our players Connor can tell you guys that was unbelievable so uh, what you guys have done is is absolutely amazing so just to put it a little bit and, and Connor's gonna get tired of hearing this story because he's heard it all for two years now I think right <laughs> So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about like players here with New Mexico State. As Mario mentioned, yeah, we're going independent. So we need the mentality of it's us against everybody. All right, and that's really what it's been anyway. We wouldn't want it any other way, right, Connor? 
no other way, okay? So, you know, when I was little, my dad, who was the toughest man I've ever met, mentally and physically, he was an old Navy guy, and overcame a lot in his life, but he used to always tell me, old man can't never accomplished anything. Don't tell me can't, okay? So, since I've been here, I've, whole, I've heard, can't be FBS program, can't beat UTEP, can't beat UNM, can't sell the stadium, I can't get fans in there, can't go to a bowl game. Well, you can't win the bowl game. Can't, can't, can't. Well, let me tell you something. You know that shovel that we took from UTEP, that spade trophy? Okay, well, we took that thing, we hit old man Cant over the head with it till we killed him. <laughs> right? And then we took him up that hill in front of Mario's office and we buried him right there, okay? So there is no more Cant. All right? We don't want to hear Cant. And our, our players are not going to say Cant. We've been off that mission for a long time. And this is the first group that we've really had that embraced uh, that chip on your shoulder mentality that it's us against everybody. We don't, all we need is these people in this room right here and the other Aggie fans. We'll go get it done, okay? So, hey, this is just the beginning of something great. We have a great opportunity. We've got to sustain what we just did. So, you know, the more ability you guys give Mario and the more ability our administration gives him to run the entire athletic department, the closer we're going to get to what we really want. But we're not going away. We, we've already started the 2018 team, has already started working out right now. They're in the weight room. Uh, we're banging away at recruiting. Uh, we're having probably the best recruiting season that uh, New Mexico State's had since Charlie Johnson and that group walked in there, which was a phenomenal group. And we've got a great group of players coming. Now, I will tell you, last week we had six recruits in Las Cruces, and we took them down to that celebration. And I told our coaching staff, and then I told the recruits actually too, because I've, I've been known to speak my mind a little bit. <laughs> Mario holds me back sometimes, but I told the recruits to their face, I said, if any of you guys don't want to come here after seeing what you just heard, I don't want you here, okay? So we got all six of them. They all six committed that day. So look, we're on the path to doing some really great things, and this really is just the beginning. And uh, our players are excited, our fans are excited. Something really special has happened here because the fans and the football team has become one. And when you get that done, Man, you can do you can do anything, anything. So, love you guys. Can't thank you enough. Go Aggies. Thanks, Doug. You know, Doug works tireless amount of hours, and you know he talked about his staff. You know, right now everybody's talking. We've got one less coach. Now we've got two less coaches. We're working on fixing that. But one of the guys that he didn't mention is uh, Frank Spanziani. You know, he brought in uh, one of the top defensive minds in the country. And we had 11 sacks two years ago. This year, the Aggies were second in the country in sacks with 43. Uh, anybody ever thought they'd hear that? It was pretty amazing. Now, as we wrap up the program, yeah. you want to hear something? Vicky, do you want to say a couple words? Come on, Vicky. Yeah. Vicky. But I, I want to say that he's right. We wouldn't have won those last two games without you guys there. Fans <coughs> make the hugest difference. We went to five bowl games at East Carolina, and everybody says, what's your favorite bowl game? And I say, this one. I mean, the purity of the love and the passion that you guys have for the Aggies, there is no better fan base in awesome. the country. And I would challenge anybody to try and show us different. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We are committed to NMSU. We have our family there. My youngest is a deputy sheriff. My daughter's a first grade teacher. My son coaches. So we're Aggies through and through. And we just want to be what you want us to be. We love you and we appreciate everything you do. Yeah. All right, when we do the caravans in a few months, Doug's out and Vicky's in. <laughs> Doug, you can stuff. Hang around, watch TV in your boxer shorts, all right? We'll take Vicky on the road with us. Doug's right, you gotta coach, play, and administer at this place with a chip on your shoulder. And it don't always make you popular, but I'm always gonna have it on, just FYI. Okay, because that's what we gotta do to be successful. The year's not over, recruiting's not over, basketball can do some special things, baseball, softball, so it would be appropriate if we ended this event so the people on the fourth floor at the very end could hear the Aggie fight song. So are we ready? Okay, a one, a two, a three. Aggies
Christy May's Restaurant is locally owned and operated with a family-friendly atmosphere. Their array of homemade comfort food is just like your mom's. From homemade chicken pot pie to their famous chicken salad on a croissant, Christy May's even offers lunch catering. Christy May's Restaurant is located at 1400 San Pedro Drive Northeast. They offer drive-in, carry-out, and catering. Open Monday through Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No! Bad dog! Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Uh, don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. Car Crafters, it's like it never happened! Hoops NM Basketball Center is coming soon. Ten full courts broken into two wings for ultimate basketball and volleyball play. Locker rooms, a lounge area, a pro shop, and a full snack bar will all be a part of a great experience. Convenient parking and access will make the Hoops NM Basketball Center a premier facility for league play and competitive regional tournaments. With over 9,000 square feet, Hoops NM Basketball Center will take court sports play to another level in our community. Courts are regulation high school size with wood floors and seating for approximately 350 per court. Major sponsors and supporters are being assembled now. If you're interested, contact Dan Serrano at 505-249-7994. Send him an email, hoopsnm at aol.com. That's hoopsnm at AOL.com. Hoops NM Basketball Center, a premier sports facility serving our community. Here at the all new Gala Chevrolet, our ultimate goal is to make life easier for you. That's why we built our new ultra modern facility from the ground up with the customer in mind. With 1,000 vehicles in stock, a great variety of pre-owned vehicles of every make and model, a clean state of the art service department focused on getting you back on the road as quickly as possible, and a sales team devoted to 100% customer satisfaction. All conveniently located in the heart of Albuquerque. We'll see you soon, right here at the all new Gala Chevrolet. All right, folks, this is Marty Watts with ProView Network. I've got the athletic director, Mario Mocho. And, Mario, I want to tell you something. For an athletic budget that is so tight, you must be, you should be given athletic director of the year because you've got the most of the money you work with. Well, you know, it is. I mean, we do uh, have a very limited budget. You know, we've got to pay back our deficit. We're mandated to balance our budget in athletics, and we've done so. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, when you step onto the field or into the pool or on the court, you know, you don't bring your checkbook. You don't bring your balance statement. You know, so I think um, there are certainly some things that hinder you when you don't have as much money as somebody else. But you can always bring that mentality, and you can always bring a chip on your shoulder. And I think our, our teams kind of across the board have done well with that. Well, right now, football had a winning season. 
season. Basketball's playing great. Big win over uh, Utah Valley State. You're number one in the WAC. I mean, and you beat Miami, one of the top teams in the country. And that bowl victory must have brought some. Did you guys make some money off the bowl? You know what? We haven't had all the expenses uh, in yet, but we know from a revenue standpoint, we probably exceeded $600,000. I, I would think that uh, there's no way we spent $600,000, but we're analyzing the hotel bills, um, the bus charters, uh, the food bills, all that stuff. So I am hopeful within you know, a week or two period of time, we'll be able to report out to the media exactly what we made. Now, that fan base was incredible in Tucson. I mean, and well, I watched the game on national television, and the national TV, they just went crazy over you guys. The underdog, 57 years, what publicity you got nationwide? Yeah, I mean, two things. Obviously, the crowd was tremendous. Uh, to have 25,000 Aggies was nothing short of spectacular. Uh, it was certainly the cherry on top. Um, you know, it was, from what I understood, uh, the highest attended uh, group of five bowl games. So but the games between two group of five teams, we were the highest attended. So kudos to the Aggie fans, and you're right. It became a national store, feel-good story. So ESPN, all the different people picked it up. So that, I think, is going to help the entire university as well. Hopefully this will get more donors to give you money since we're fighting this, the power five schools that get all the money. And most importantly, the, the morale in Aggie land right now must be the highest I've seen probably in 25 years. Yeah, it's great that the morale is at an all-time high. You know, that leads to more people inquiring about New Mexico State, attending New Mexico State, student fees going up, you know, different things like that. So the more students we can get, the more excitement we can generate from the alums, it only is positive. I'm glad you stay in Division One. I. I know the independent schedule is going to be tough next year, but what do you think the next year's uh, games are to be playing? You know, I'm actually happy with it. When we were in the Sun Belt the last year, we had one home game in two months from September 25th to November 25th. We only played one home game. So as we go into being independent, you know, we've got games with Wyoming, um, you know, with New Mexico, with Utah State. So we've got Mountain West. Um, we've got our old rivals with UTEP. We finally get to play an FCS opponent and we'll play some old Sun Belt opponents. So, you know, we will we'll have a good, well-rounded schedule. But in the future years, we'll play an awful lot of Mountain West Conference schools. And I know our fans will really like that. I'm hoping that we can start doing replays on Sunday called the Aggie Hour from 12 to 3. We'll put you on the network so the fans up here can watch the games on Sunday. Hopefully we can work something out where we just do a 24-hour replay. That would really help the alumni up here. Well, you know, anytime we can get content in Albuquerque, anytime we can physically be in Albuquerque is a tremendous thing because we have uh, the vast majority of our alums outside of Doniana County and Las Cruces live right here. So it's huge for us to uh, to be here and have content here. It's been great to hear you on ESPN Radio. I'm on the Saturday morning show, but it, what a boost to have you come on on Henry T on some of the shows like Bob Brown. Yeah, no, I tell you what, uh, 101.7 The Team has been tremendous for us. Um, I always appreciate being on. I think a lot of our Aggie fans want to know what's going on. It's nice when they can kind of hear it from the horse's mouth. And, uh, yeah, I just appreciate uh uh, you know, all the support um, and the opportunity the media have given us. Well, thank you for coming on. We're going to be doing a little documentary on the, tonight's event, this Aggie great victory. And I want to tell you something. I'm proud that I'm from New Mexico and we have a team like you guys. Well, I appreciate you saying that and thanks for having me on. All right. Hi, everybody. This is Marty Watts with ProView Networks. Now, I've got the head coach, Doug Martin, who's been around for five years. He's just coming off a winning season, the first time we've had a winning season in a long time. And we, it's been 57 years that we were in a bowl game. We won that game, and it was pretty exciting. This got to be one of the great moments in Aggie football in the last 20 years. Well, I know there's a lot of people that are taking a lot of pride in what was done right now, Marty, and our, our fans are and our players are. And, you know, our fans were a big part of this. They stuck with us through a lot of times, and, uh, you know, well, they made the difference in that bowl game. I think there was like 30,000 fans. If you, There might be 30,000. They sound like 80,000, you know, and they really made a difference when we needed them. They were right behind our bench, and i tell you what, they really motivated our players. They, they willed our guys to win that bowl game. Now, we're here tonight to celebrate the Aggie victory, One of the, and what a great game in overtime, and, and, and what a fitting guy. Larry Rose, the third, scores the winning touchdown. You know, when he scored that touchdown, I, I told myself that nobody else would be uh, more deserving of scoring that touchdown because if you look at all the kids that we've built this program 
on. He is really the start. He was one of the first kids to believe in us and come on board, and uh, he's been just a great leader. And uh, more than an athlete, he's been a better man than, than anybody else around. What's the incredible thing about Aggie football? I've been following since 1960. I do remember that Sunball game. I was in the second grade. <laughs> but I do remember you took over a program, and you literally built it brick by brick. It was probably what I wouldn't say at the bottom of Division One, but it was down there somewhere. It, out of what, 126 teams? It was on the bottom. <laughs> it was on the bottom. It's been a long journey. And, uh, you know, but we had a plan to fix the problems that existed for a long time. But uh, I think the biggest thing is we never deviated from the plan. We stuck with it. And people gave us time to stick with it. But we built it the right way. So <laughs> now you have a chance to sustain something. And uh, that's the big biggest part of it. Going in spring, you're going to have 85 people on the roster. First time since you've been the coach. Yeah, we started off, we only had 61 on scholarship. And we've been able to build it up a little bit each year this will be the first season coming up this year where we've had uh, 85 scholarships how many people are coming back from the bowl victory for this coming spring yeah actually we're in really good shape we lose some key players tyler rogers a quarterback larry rod uh, larry rose of course but we return uh, eight starters on offense and nine on defense so we've really got a good nucleus coming back and you know i was talking to bob davies the other day he thinks he has a great roster coming back he has a lot of people coming back that aggie lobo game should be a complete salad down in Las Cruces. That's always a great rival game, you know, and, and everybody thinks they have a great roster right now, but right. I can tell you what makes a difference. And we talk, Everybody's undefeated. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit earlier. What makes a difference is, is chemistry and heart, and right now our team and our players, they've got a great chemistry and a great desire playing with a lot of chip on their shoulder, and uh, they're fun to be around. You can't major a man's heart. I know it's tough to recruit. You think you have a great three-star, four-star, whatever player, but it's the heart. It's how bad do they want it. My definition as a champion, are you willing to do the things that nobody wants to do? Well, you know, every, you got to have talent. Everybody's got to have talent. But when you can find a young man has talent and has great character and great desire, then you have something really special. And, and that's what the Larry Roses were and those guys that we've recruited. They, none of the guys we've recruited have been highly recruited players. Larry Rose only had one scholarship offer. Tyler Rogers had one. Jaleel Scott only had one. He's playing the senior bowl right now. So I think With Baker Mayfield. Yeah, what we've done is we've done a great job of evaluating talent. And I think that's what our staff does really, in my opinion, better than anybody. What you're telling me, you have the ability to coach players up. Well, you have to develop players. You know, we're not going to get the marquee guy. we got to get the you know, guy that needs to add some weight, needs to, you know, get a little bit stronger, those type of things. And so the weight room is really important for us, and developing players is important. I understand under the appropriation bill at the, at the legislature, I think there's 400000 going to go to that weight room. You need that money probably. Well, we need all the funds we can get. You know, we've been behind a lot of Not many people understand that, you know, you have nine full-time assistant coaches. We coached with eight this year, and right now everybody has ten, and we still only have eight. So we're really still behind. So are you going to have 10 going into the season? Well, we're hoping so. You know, we're hoping those things have to change if we're going to sustain this. Well, one thing I will tell you this, Coach, I've been, I'm so proud of you. I remember when Charlie Johnson, I do remember a Preacher Pilot and those great players. I remember in the 60s, there was a guy from Real Grand High School called Speedy Gonzalez. He was a pretty good ball player. And so <laughs> I've, I've been following these Aggies teams since I was a kid, you know, and, and I was so proud. I watched that game on television, and I literally had tears in my eyes when you won that Super Bowl I could the, the, the God just the power on television was powerful well I've heard that from a lot of people and a lot of Aggie fans and, and those 1960 players were all a big part of this Charlie Johnson is one of my best friends back in Las Cruces and has been very supportive and, you know, the thing is, we're going to try, hopefully we can work it out with the athletic department, we're going to try to have an Aggie replay on Sunday for basketball, football. We think there's so many fans up here who will probably watch it on Sunday they have access to TV. Well, I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of fans who have been very loyal to our football program up here and, and to me specifically, so we appreciate them. Okay, well, Coach, thank you for giving us the time, and, and good luck in this, uh, this special night tonight. You bet. Thank you, Marty. While we're going to pause the break, I was just wondering, you started to – uh, can you talk a little bit about the rivalry between you're here in Albuquerque, you know, bringing your bringing your parade up here, this is, you know, where the Lobos live. I just thought maybe, are you willing to speak a little bit about yeah, the rivalry? Sure. Does it matter to you? No, that's fine. I, I actually there. think it's gotten better. Yeah. Um, okay, so but, Marty, yeah. uh, say, yeah, hey, you're in Albuquerque. Did rivalry mean anything to you? How's the rivalry treated? Okay. 
Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Coach, uh, talking about the rivalry, since you're up in Albuquerque, it probably means a lot, this rivalry between us Lobos and the Aggies. It's the most important game every year, Marty. You know, it's the in-state state championship. And, you know, any school when you play your in-state rival, that's huge. And it's bragging rights. It's pride. Uh, it's it's a more meaningful game than any other game. And you've got on the Lobos the last two games, two great games. Anybody could have won those two games. Yeah. Most of those games have been really hard-hitting, really clean, you know, uh, good football football games and tremendous crowds, tremendous support. That's as good a rivalry as it is in college football. I know one thing. Bob Davies said he's going to start going to church twice on Sunday. <laughs> well, Bob does a great job of coaching. They've got a great program here, and it's great to have two programs that are doing well in the state. It's good for everybody in the state. And, then, you know, the big game with UTEP really – is a big thing down there, isn't it? Well, it is, and that's a little bit unique in that you have two rivals because they're only 30 miles from us, so that's another one. You know, although they're out of state, so it's not as meaningful as the New Mexico game, but uh, it, it's tough having two rivals. I got to believe the Lobo game in September is going to be a sellout down in Las Cruces. Oh, there's, there's no question. I think a lot of our games are going to be sellouts coming up. Well, thanks a lot, Coach, for answering that question. Appreciate it, Murray. I've got Connor Cra Kramer. He played in the bowl game, but the most important thing, you were a senior and you're from Alabama, and your biggest moment was the last game of the season where you had to win the game to go to the bowl game. You caught the winning pass, and since you're from Alabama, Kramer, that must have been a big thing, Connor. Oh, it was huge. Um, growing up 20, about 20 minutes away from South Alabama, uh, coming out of high school, didn't get recruited by them, went to JUCO, still didn't get recruited by them. Uh, so then coming to New Mexico State, getting a chance to play against them, and then catch that game when I'm ball against them. It was just an incredible feeling. Did your, were your parents in the, in the, in the stands that last game? They sure were. Well, they must have been made you beating Alabama. Oh, they, they loved it just as well as I did. They, we all rushed the field and had a great time together. What was, tell me about your experience playing in the bowl game. Was that a great experience? Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, everything I could ever thought it was. Uh, that's you dream to play in those bowl games. I've been as a kid growing up. I, I, I watched all the bowl games. Uh, I've always loved football, so I always wanted to be in that situation, and it was everything I thought it would be. When crunch time came, you made the catch that will go down in Aggie history. Fifty-seven years not getting to the bowl game, and you got him there. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's just it's so much the process after I caught that ball. It's just so surreal. Uh, just seeing all those fans rushing the field and all the excitement and everybody was just so happy. It's just 57 years is a long time. Now, what, what was the feeling after the bowl game? Was it even bigger than the one the last game? Yeah, it, it, that was just the cherry on top. And we were all excited to get to the bowl game, but then to get there and then win it in, in overtime fashion, uh, that was just, like I said, the cherry on top. It was just an amazing feeling. So are you going to go back to Alabama or are you going to stay out in the southwest after you get your degree? Yeah, well, I graduate here in May, and then um, really wherever it takes me. I don't have a plan. I don't mind traveling all over, but uh, I'm interning with our athletic department this semester, so I want to continue a field in the, in, the, in the business side of athletics. What's the, what do you think about the Southwest compared to that humidity and the heat in Alabama? Oh, yeah, definitely different. Every time I go back home, the humidity get, gets me, especially during the summertime. You know, you walk outside, you're sweating. Uh, like out here, it's just a dry heat. You feel like you're standing in an oven. Uh, so What's the difference like in two days? It must be hotter in Alabama than, than Las Cruces. I don't know. It's just a different heat. It's pretty hot out here, but yeah, when you're in, out in the south, you're sweating a lot more, I'll tell you that. But it's, it's hot either way. Well, I just want to thank you for coming on with ProView Networks. We're hoping in the future we're going to do replays of your games on Sunday, Aggie football. But, but I just want to say thank you very much for getting the Aggies to a bowl game. Hey, thank you for having me. It was, it was a great season. I've got John Gofar and Bridget Gofar. Uh, both of you guys went to uh, New Mexico State, right? Yes, we did. And tell me what you did. You played softball. Yes, I played softball at New Mexico State. I played here at St. Pius, uh, graduated in 1996, state championship softball team at Pius, went on to play at Eastern Arizona, and then finished my last three years at New Mexico State, graduated in 90. That's the same school that Tim Keller went to, St. Pius, the mayor of Albuquerque. That's true, I heard that. John, where did you go to school at? I went to, actually, I went to high school at Clovis High School and graduated in 1983. Did you play football there? No, I didn't. I played uh, basketball and baseball. You don't have to. So, I understand you were at the bowl game in Arizona. Tell me about the experience yes, with the Aggies beating Utah State in overtime. It was the time of our lives. We had such a great time. We went down with a bunch of family and friends, um, planned for it. We were actually at the game in New Mexico, in Las Cruces where they won to go to the bowl game. And we said if they went to a bowl game, in fact, he said a year ago, if they go to a bowl game, we're going. So we went and it was amazing. Was there, you think there was over 30,000 Aggie fans? 
Uh, easy, yeah. It was packed. It was a lot of fun. There wasn't hardly any Utah State uh, Aggies, right? There were a few, and they made a little bit of noise, but we definitely drowned them out. <laughs> so what was that experience when Larry Rose the third scores that touchdown overtime? Did you guys jump? Did you go on the field? Absolutely. We, we followed our son, who's 23 years old. He, he was the one jumped down and ran down the field with the team to celebrate. We were right behind him. <laughs> so can you imagine the Lobos played Aggies in September? That game would be a sellout on Las Cruces, don't you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. And we go to those every year, too, here in Albuquerque. We live in Albuquerque, yeah. but we go down to state for those games also. John, what, what was your experience at the bowl game? It was amazing. Uh, had a good time. Um, when Larry Rhodes scored that touchdown, it was on. It, we just stormed the field. It was a great time. Well, John Bridge, thanks for coming on ProView Network. We're on Comcast 26, but we, we are think, we're trying to get replays of Aggie football on Sunday. Would you watch it if we had the replay? Oh, yes. In fact, we have it recorded because we still watch part of it. So, yeah, we so we're going to try to talk to the athletic director to put all the replays on Sunday. We'll call it the Aggie Hour. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all your work. All right. All right, folks, this is Marty with this this Aggie victory party up here at the, uh, is it the Nativa Hotel? Nativa Lodge. Uh, Nativa yeah. Lodge. And, and I've got Walter Hines, who's a, one of the famous alums, and he knows the history of the bowl games. Tell us about the history of the Aggies playing bowl games. Uh, the, the Aggies played in the first uh, Sun Bowl game in 1936. My dad was coach. Uh, they played Harden Simmons, uh, which at the time was a powerful uh, football school. That game ended in a 14 to 14 tie. Uh, a couple of locals, uh, Hookie and Laurel Apodaca, scored the tying touchdown in the last quarter on a uh, pass and lateral play. Uh, and uh, Aggie fans went crazy. They had a great time. So, did you go down to Tucson for this bowl game? I did. I went to Tucson, and I, uh, wife and I had been in uh, Hawaii for the Diamond Head Basketball Classic. We barely got back in time to go to Tucson, and what an experience that was. Well, excuse me. It was great experience watching on television. Yeah, I think it was one of the best bowl games uh, of the season, and I've talked to a lot of a lot of people that watched most of the games, and they said it was really exciting. And of course, the enthusiasm of the fans rushing the field and the history uh being out of a bowl for so long just made it very special. Well, are you are you buy se do you buy season tickets? Buy season tickets. I've been buying season tickets uh, for over 25 years for both football and basketball. So you are a real dedicated Aggie fan. Yeah. Well, it's in the blood. You know, with the dad's my dad's history. My mother was also uh, ran the physical education department at New Mexico A&M. So uh, I grew up on Aggie athletics. And what year did you graduate? I got a bachelor's in 65 and a master's in 67. Well, thank you for coming on with ProView Network for this great night, Aggie, the Aggie Victory Party. You betcha. Thank you very much for having me. Hi, everybody. This is Marty Watts with ProView Networks. I've got Jeff Sembietta, and he's, he's the famous anchor in the morning for 610, a sports animal. Infamous or famous? And we want to thank you for being one of our sponsors on the scoreboard for every high school game. We have the New Mexico Bowl up there on the left-hand corner. Yeah, we appreciate and, what ProView Networks has done for the Gilda New Mexico Bowl. Thanks, Marty. And, and, and you're the host of this famous party tonight. Tell us what you thought of this thing tonight. I thought it was wonderful to see the Aggies come out. I, I, I said it tonight, Marty, I, I, it, it defines why we watch sports, right? We watch for those moments that we win, that we come together. Nothing brings people together in, in large quantities and, and, and in that intense emotion like sports. And to see the Aggie Nation a month later still wobbling in their shoes after something that was so fun and so special, it's real. And, and I, it, it's just fun to see all these people just happy and together and it, it, it was it was really nice to see that it's a big crowd here tonight you know talking about doug martin he literally built his football program brick by brick in five years kind of what bob davies done but what he's done his his team was really at the bottom of the barrel when he took over with less coaches and what he's done was just incredible yeah it, it's perseverance and, and you got to give a lot of credit to doug for trusting the process and and, and really to mario for sticking with him if you remember uh, a couple of years ago, they, they lost in, um, in overtime to UTEP, a game they had when they were up 14 minutes. They were up by 14 with three minutes to go. 
and then uh, they lose. They went on the road and lost, and came home on a homecoming and lost to Troy, fifty something to three. And there was a big swell to, uh, for Mario to make a change, and Mario stuck with Doug. And, and and I thought it was the right thing at the time. I was in the minority, and they came out. That was when they they broke the um, the 19 game losing streak in overtime. It was the ankleception game where they beat Idaho. And I got to call that game for Aggie Vision, and I remember the excitement. There weren't there weren't a thousand people in the building, but the the, the excitement amongst the team was palpable. And, and maybe it started there. But staying with Doug, it was the right move, and, and it was good to see. It was good to see something good happen to a good guy. It was good to see it pay off for a guy who stuck with doing it the right way and uh, and see good things happen. You're going to have 85 scholarship players next come out in spring. They've never been there before. He's had a great recruiting career this year, a lot of good players. He's building the program. The toughest thing is, what do you think about them going in this independent schedule? You know, I like what they did with the schedule. I, I think they can sustain it for, you know, a few years. Obviously, I don't think it's anybody's long-term plan. I think they need to and want to get into a conference. But I like what they've done with a lot of Mountain West teams and Sun Belt teams. And, and you know, going on the road, they're going to go to Minnesota next year. They go to BYU, I think, a home at home in Liberty. It's teams that, that, that maybe a few years ago, wow, they can't beat them. Well, they can beat those teams now and maybe get back to this point next year and be celebrating another bowl appearance and potentially a bowl victory. And you, look, you, you deal with the hand you're dealt. And I, I think they've dealt with it the best they can. You know, Robert Poynoy, the voice of the Lobo, he and I were talking from – Teams 30 through 95 in the rankings. All those teams are fighting 5-5, five and 6-5, five, 7-6. Six and five, seven, six. They get a break here. You know, the Lobos could easily have won 7 8 games last year if you had a few breaks. Those teams are so close. And of course, you have to have a few breaks. And that's why, as a New Mexico bow, you don't know what's going to happen. Every year, somebody pops out. Well, and that's, that's what football is at that level. And you're right. I mean, you, you look at whether it's a San Diego State down to a New Mexico State or New Mexico or Wyoming or Utah State or a Marshall. Or, there, there's, when you have a good year, you get those breaks. Their guy misses a field goal or your guy intercepted a ball late in the game or, or made a play somewhere. You know, I say this all the time. A coach had a good or a bad week depending on whether an 18-year-old kid made a tackle or a 20-year-old kid made a kick, right? The difference between winning and losing is, is, is that fine. Mar- especially for the Lobos and Aggies. Well, sure. and, and, you know, Aggies could have won two more games this year easily. They had those two games. No, they absolutely, and they could have lost a couple that went the other way. So you have to have some breaks. It's like, it's like you, you look down any team, and I, you know, I looked at what Marshall did this year. I looked at Colorado State's games. Well, Marshall was in our game. They could have been a 10-win team. They, they lost three games by combined eight points. Colorado State lost the three games by the same type margin. It's just winning and losing. That's how finite it is, and sometimes one play makes a difference. Definitely from 30 to 90 in, th- in those teams. And the thing about this year coming up, the Lobos have a lot of talent coming back. They're going to be pretty, and so the Aggies. he got eight eight starters coming back on defense, or offense, I think. This game down in Las Cruces is going to be a sellout. I mean, everybody in the state's going to watch that game. Hopefully you're going to be doing the television. I don't know if I am or not, but it should be a sellout. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's sold out. And that's what we want. Look, whether you're a Lobo or an Aggie, it's good for the other guy to be good because ri- rivalries aren't rivalries when one team's winning all the time. Hammer and the Dale meet all the time. Hammer wins every time. It's not a rivalry. Nail needs to win every once in a while. And now I think that you've got you've got a pretty easy. We got ourselves a rivalry now, and, and nobody's taking New Mexico State credit. No more. And and were you there in Tucson? Were you able to? No, I wasn't able to get there. No, I watched and I watched so many of my friends just jump up and down like school children. It was uh, it was so 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 good to see. Yeah. So the national press was fantastic. The national exposure the Aggies got was just unbelievable. Yeah, it was great, and they deserved it. It was a great story, and you know, people want to tell good stories. People want to tell good stories. So you got a final comment on this tonight? What a night. We, we're going to have this on a documentary of ProView, but you're, you're the main host. Any final comments? I was just a privilege to be asked to be the MC tonight and, and to watch Aggie fans wobbling in their shoes after big victory. It's good to see good people feel good. And uh, now the difference between a good season and a good program is going to be the support and how people come out and support this, this program and uh, turn this thing into a program that this is the norm and not some sort of an anomaly. Well, you know, at ProView, Steve Davis really appreciates what you've done for us, Jeff. It means a lot f- with your support, and hopefully this documentary is going to be nice for all the Aggie fans to watch on television. I think they're going to love it. Thanks for doing it, and thanks for letting me be part of it. Okay. Thanks, Marty.